Hey you guys, Christy Titus here, and I'm at the Hornady factory with Team Hornady member Preston Litfer. And we're talking today about, and I'm really excited about this, case prep. So I brought my hunting rifle and about 50 rounds of once fired brass um, that is ready to be cleaned up and reloaded right here at the factory so that I can take it hunting this fall. And I'm super excited to go through this process with you. Yeah, we'll go through the whole gamut. Well, uh, first off, we'll go ahead and throw it into the vibratory tumbler since we're a little strapped for time. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get it sized, check our overall length, we'll hand inspect it, make sure that it chambers in your rifle, which is always a great idea. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go ahead and, and, and chamfer and deburr the case mouth and trim if needed. Uh, but first off, let's go ahead and get it into the vibratory tumbler. When it comes to washing our brass, now we're using a vibratory tumbler here, but you guys also have other types of cleaning systems. What's the baseline of care that you need to give in a tumbler? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So vibratory tumbling is the way it's been done for many, many years. Somewhat recently, ultrasonic cleaners have become somewhat more popular and less expensive. So a lot of more people are getting those. Uh, and then uh, wet tumbling with stainless steel pins has become very popular in recent years. We actually have a variety of, of all three of those mm -hmm. uh, to choose from, and it really comes down to personal preference. Um, in my opinion, uh, wet tumbling with stainless steel pins gives you a brilliant finish inside and out and can really get your primer pockets clean uh, if you're to decap before throwing it into the wet tumbler. Vibratory has been done for a lot of years. Uh, and it really does shine up the outside of the brass. Does a pretty good job at cleaning the inside as well. Um, and then ultrasonic cleaning does a really good job of cleaning inside and out. Maybe not as brilliant as a finish when done, um, but it does clean excellently. So it really comes down to uh, how much time do you have? Um, the ultrasonic and the wet tumbler do involve dry time as well. We don't want to be putting uh, powder into a wet case. Mm -hmm. um, so there's dry time involved. Uh, vibratory tumbling uh, is a little bit quicker, so that's why I went with uh, that route today. You can actually do what I did, and you can actually tumble your brass with a cap in and remove it later, or you can do you know, your cap removal in advance, really clean out those primer pockets, and do it either way is, is acceptable practice. That's right. So since we went ahead and cleaned them today with the, with the primers still in the cases, we'll size and decap them, and then we also have a primer pocket cleaner which we can go ahead and manually clean those pockets out uh, after we're done with that, and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, let's get to work. All right, Krista, we've come over and we've let our cases uh, tumble for a couple of hours. Um, you can let those go even longer. I've had them go overnight, no issues whatsoever. They're just even cleaner. I'm gonna have you dump out uh, um, the bulk of the corn cob media back into its original tub, and then we'll go into the media sifter after we're done with that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, media for, for this little sifter to handle, so I'll have you dump that out into that tub there. All right, now that we got the bulk of the material out, let's go ahead and put the rest of it into our sifter and get all of that media uh, taken away. Excellent. We'll put our lid on and if you want to give it uh, a few cycles forward and backwards, we'll have that cleaned up. All right, Christy, now that we've got the media separated, let's go ahead and get that brass out of here. We'll throw it into this ammo can for the time being before we move on to our next step. So all of this tumbling media, do we have to throw this away or can we reuse it? Nope, we'll, we'll reuse it. We'll put all of it back into the media tumbler right now and then the next time we're, we need to clean some brass, it'll be ready to go. We'll dump our brass in and start over. All right, Christy, so now that we have our cases cleaned, I'd like you to go through and inspect each one of them as we line them up on the cardboard. Uh, in preparation for case lube. And what we're looking for is any splits, folds, or any abnormalities that might make you uh, have any concern. Yep, so this is the most important part of the process. If something bad could happen, it's probably gonna happen because of any brass issues. So this is, while tedious, this is quite important. A lot of times if you're gonna find uh, a crack or a split that's gonna be in the neck, the shoulder, or down here at the web. Hopefully that's not going to be happening. Okay. This can be a very tedious process and I think uh, the case prep is probably the slowest process of everything and makes for a great wintertime hobby. <laughs> it does. It, 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 most reloaders are, are not big fans of case preparation but 
it's part of the uh, of the reloading process and we we all have to do it all right christy before we go ahead and lubricate your cases i want to go ahead and get a measurement from the base of the sh of your casing to the shoulder uh, that way we know what you, your rifle's chamber looks like and we can size it appropriately. So if you don't mind, I've got our headspace comparator attached to our caliper and I'm going to get a measurement from the base to a datum point on the shoulder. We don't really need to care about the inches at this point. Um, when we size it, it'll be appropriate, but we're looking at a, a 4.8, so 48 thousandths on the dial. Mm -hmm. We're going to set it up so that uh, your shoulder gets bumped one or two thousandths. Uh, so we're looking for a 4.7 or a 4.6, and we'll make sure that we're sizing your, your cases appropriately, not oversizing them and creating headspace, but we're going to size them back enough to make sure that you, uh, you chamber every time. Perfect. All right, Christy, now that we're ready to lubricate our cases, uh, we've got our one-shot case lube. If you want to shake that vigorously for a little bit, we'll go ahead and hit it at a 45-degree angle left and right, left and right, and then we'll try and hit it from the back side again at 45 degree angle. What that ensures is that we get a lubrication on the inside of the case mouth as well as the outside and, and on the body. As we wait for the aerosol to flash off uh, the, the propellant, we'll go ahead and get our size die set up next. Now that we've moved into setting up the size die, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the lock and load bushing in our press. Uh, that is a, a Hornady feature. You can actually retrofit the system into other presses, but we'll move on from that. Uh, we've got a custom grade set of our 6.5 PRC dies. If you go ahead and open up and grab the sizing die, the one with the long spindle through it, and uh, if you want to go ahead and lower the handle and raise the ram to the top of the stroke, I'll have you thread the die body in until uh, it makes contact with the shell holder. And then once this die is into the bushing, it stays there forever, basically. That's right. Um, unless you want something to change, I mean, you can move it around. But the great feature is once you have it set once, an eighth of a turn, you can pull it out of the press. The next time you need to reload this cartridge, an eighth of a turn back in, and it's set once again. It's fantastic. Um, but at this point, let's go ahead and grab a case and let's size uh, a, a casing. Have to slide it in from the front. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now it's just ready to go up into the case. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and check it and make sure that we've got it sized down at all. Looks like we still need to come, come down, down with our die. Because you're at five right now. Yep. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring it down a quarter of a turn. I think we still have a ways to go. So if you want to grab another one. I always like to use um, a freshly, an unsized casing at, at any time just so that we can get uh, the die set, set for the majority of the cases. So this is where the finesse comes into reloading because one tiny quarter turn or an eighth of a turn is really making the difference in our overall length measurement. Yep. And so now we're down to four five. We've got three thousandths worth of shoulder bump. Okay. Now, they're not all going to be perfect. They're not all going to be down to the exact thousandth. Um, but I think we're pretty close here. So we're going to try and, and heavy size a few. Okay. And um, see if um, if we've got that die set the way we like it. All right. Perfect. Yeah, and it's right at 47 and oh, just perfect. a little bit over. Okay. So that's perfect. Excellent. Why don't we go ahead and lock the die down with our lock ring. And we can go ahead and size the rest of these cases. Now that we have sized everything, we just simply refer to the reloading journal and check our overall case length that's recommended per SAMI spec and measure with the calipers the cases that we just sized to make sure that we meet that specification. If we're over the specification, we have to trim. If not, we can just move on to the next step and load our powder charge and then go into seating. That's right. But if we were to trim, we would use our, our cam lock trimmer here or our case prep center. Uh, if you want to check those out in action, check on our Hornady's YouTube channel. But if you want to, we can uh, measure yeah. a few of these. Uh, maximum case length on the 6.5 PRC is 2.030. Mm -hmm. So if we're under that, we won't have to trim and we can move on to chamfering and debring the cases. So this one's measuring right at 2.025. Yep. So we've got about five, six thousandths to spare there. 
Let's check a few of them though to make sure that one of them's not just an anomaly. Another 2.024. Mm -hmm. I think this batch is good to not trim. Now that we have everything um, sized, the next step would be to chamfer indie burr. And basically that's just removing any sort of um, rough edges or mm -hmm. anything that would cause any marring when we go to see the bullet, correct? That's right. And on the outside as well, we're getting rid of, rid of any bumps uh, uh, that don't necessarily affect the bullet seating, but it'll certainly make things look a little bit better, uh, help ease uh, in chambering as well. All right, so now our cases are finally prepped. Uh, the worst part of the of the reloading portion is over with. We can now move into our, our loading portion where we're gonna put in primers, we're gonna get a powder charge in there, we're gonna seat these bullets, and then we'll be ready to shoot. If you guys are watching this at home and you have any additional questions, get online to the Hornady website. They have a tremendous video library that will take you in depth into additional stages that we covered during this segment. Thank you all for joining us.